Hello there everyone, welcome back to the channel. I was not planning on making a video today because I was up super late last night and uh, I was celebrating because something crazy happened yesterday. I actually won the VR Content Creator of the Year award at the VR Awards 2023. I really did not expect to win, so thank you so much to all of you who voted and to all of you who watch my videos. It means the absolute world to me. Um, and yeah, I haven't kind of got over it yet today. I couldn't sleep last night. The adrenaline was pumping. I went and got a McFlurry at like midnight, so there was also sugar involved, which probably kept me awake. But that's not the only exciting thing that happened yesterday. Steam also released a standalone native application for the Quest family of headsets that allows you to wirelessly connect to your Steam library on PC and play your games. So basically, it's a AirLink or virtual desktop competitor. And I wanted to check it out today. Now this isn't going to be an extensive test, but I just want to see how it runs. I'm a big, big fan of virtual desktop. Now I am already seeing people online saying that virtual desktop is done for. This is the end of virtual desktop. Steam Link's here now, and it's the only thing we'll ever need. And I don't strictly think that's true. I don't think that's true at all, actually. Virtual desktop is still an incredibly robust and feature-rich application. Virtual desktop has been, you know, it's been in development for years. This is something that has been built upon and built upon and built upon. The systems within it and the things that it can do are still, I think, very advanced compared to what Steam Link can do. And there's things in Virtual Desktop that you cannot do in Steam Link. So Virtual Desktop will allow you to play your Oculus Store games. It's not just your Steam library. However, in terms of a free way to play your PC or PC VR games, or Steam VR games, I should say, via a Quest headset, this is probably going to be the dominant way of doing it now. I think this is probably going to replace AirLink. I don't think it will replace Virtual Desktop. I think Virtual Desktop still has a place in the industry and it will offer a service to people that Steam Link cannot do. But I do think Steam Link will probably end up replacing AirLink if it's good enough. I'm going to capture everything natively inside the inside the headset, which is why you can, you can see me there. Look, there's me on OBS. That's weird, it's like Inception. Um, I'm not going to do any capturing of gameplay on OBS. I'm going to capture it all within the headset. I'm going to try the 60 FPS um, 60 FPS capture method. Let's put it over there for now. Do you like my derpy little Pokemon? I'm going to show you them for a second. Look at them. Amazing, right? Okay, let's get this app running. And let's do this. Okay, let's open it up. How easy is this to get going? Oh, that's nice. You even get the steam noise inside your headset, okay? All right, that's my PC. Select the computer running steam. Click connect, connect. Connecting. Uh, is that it? Continue. Is that it? Really? Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, well, that's it. Um, that is very, very simple. And... This looks very, very good. This is very crisp. The visual is incredibly sharp, and it seems to be running smoothly, but this isn't a great test because this is only the Steam home area. Let's go back in here. Let's load a game up. Let's load up my old favorite, my old classic, a little bit of Half-Life Alex. And again, I'm recording this all inside the headset itself. Before I load that up, actually, I mean, what's it gonna do if I press, okay. So if I press the left Oculus button, I'm, I'm getting my, my Steam library comes up. Um, here it is, and I can browse my games. I guess I guess I can play flat screen games as well. I don't know if I would need to connect a controller to the Quest via Bluetooth or have it connected to a PC. I'll do a test in a mo with something like Alan Wake. I'm playing that at the moment. Um, okay, let's load into Alex. Right, let's close that down. Let's load into Alex first and see what the native PC VR or Steam VR experience is like. Okay, here I am playing Half-Life Alex using Steam Link. Visually, it's bloody gorgeous, as I expected it would be. Um, yeah, I guess the real test is going to be kind of getting into some action and seeing how smoothly it performs in terms of like frame rate and if I see any artifacting. 
Um, which is something I don't really get with virtual desktop. I have a very good virtual desktop experience, I must admit. Like, my network infrastructure, what I've got set up at home, works really well um, for virtual desktop. But I don't have a particularly good experience when it comes to Airlink. I, I used to have a great experience using Airlink when I lived in my old house. Um, but since moving, Airlink just hasn't run well for me at all. So virtual desktop has been my go-to. There's there's no latency here. Um, that is basically one to one. Oh boy. Yeah. Flipping hell. Okay. Right. Let's get straight into. I just I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna play fast. I'm just gonna shoot a lot. Make a lot of kind of carnage and just see how well it holds up. Okay. The visual is incredible. No, nope, none of that. I wonder what the capture is going to be like inside the, uh, the quest itself. I've not actually trialed the 60 FPS capture method um, natively inside the quest headset yet. So hopefully the, the capture looks nice for this video and the quality is high. Come on. Yeah, this is this is this is bloody good. This is completely and utterly playable. It's beyond playable. I think calling it playable is um is a disservice. It's 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 very impressive. Don't throw that bucket at me. I know what you're like, mate. You oh, are yeah, got you just before you could. Like detail wise, this is as crisp as playing it via virtual desktop. I mean it it it, it yeah, it looks just as good as VD. And as a free option, that's that's huge for a lot of people. Because, you know, Virtual Desktop, I think, is definitely worth the price of entry. But, you know, not everyone has that money, I guess, to spend on an application. And they might want to try a free version to see how their wireless infrastructure at home kind of handles playing their PC VR games, and maybe they don't want to invest the money without knowing what the experience is going to be like, maybe Airlink hasn't worked. This could be a better option for a lot of people. Bugger off you. Bonk. <laughs> yeah, this is this is playing uh, really, really well, and it looks incredible. I'm not getting any artifacting. I'm not noticing it having to, like, drop the bitrate at all um, to cope with, with anything. Now, if you see any kind of juddering and things, that might just be the quest capture. Because again, I haven't experimented with this. Oh, yeah. Thank you. With this 60 FPS capture. I don't really know what kind of pressure it puts on the quest as a device. I usually just use the. I think it's a 30 FPS capture, typically. But I wanted to test the. Uh, why do I want to go that way? I don't want to go that way. Come here. Thank you. I don't know if this would replace virtual desktop for me. That's my, my gut instinct immediately is I don't know if it would replace it. Um, I think it all depends on a like a case by case use basis, like a use case basis. What am I playing? Obviously, if I'm jumping into something that's Oculus Store, um, then I'm going to go for virtual desktop because I can't do that with Steam Link. Um, and I think I'd really need to dive into the settings on Steam Link to see. Jesus, to see what it can do compared to Virtual Desktop, because Virtual Desktop has so many kind of modular features. As I said at the start, Virtual Desktop has been in development for years, and it has so many layers now. You can do so much within that application to tailor the experience that you have. So it, it might be that I can get much better results out of Virtual Desktop currently by tinkering, by tinkering with my settings, changing you know things like the bitrate and the encoder. Um, you can do different encoders. I don't really know how it all works on a technical level, but I am very impressed <laughs> with Virtual Desktop and the experience I've had. But this is very good. I mean, and it was quick to set up. I mean, if I now want to jump out of Half-Life Alex, I just exit game. And I'm doing this all, like, natively inside the, the Quest headset, obviously. I'm not having to do anything on the PC. And I'm back here. I'm straight back into the home environment. And it is running very, very well. Okay, so what happens if I do open up a non-VR game? Right, so I've loaded up Alan Wake, which is, you know, famously not a VR game. I have a controller plugged into my PC. So this isn't 
Bluetooth connected to the Quest itself. This is plugged into the PC, and the game is playing on a, on a big floating screen in front of me. I can make that screen bigger if I just... Ooh, I'm moving the camera around. You can actually make it like comedically large. Um, and then if I switch back to my controller, I can start moving it around. Now, this isn't running particularly well. I don't know if this is just this game, but this is very rough. Like, this is struggling to play. It's cool that it loads up. I, I wonder if it's just this game. But, like, Half-Life Alex was running cabin. flawlessly. And this is not running particularly well. I've never had a problem running my flat games on big screens in virtual desktop. But this seems to be struggling. Perhaps Alan Wake is just, I don't know, a bad test. Or the, you know, the software's in its infancy. It's very new. It came out yesterday. So maybe it needs some, maybe it needs some tinkering and some updates to allow every game to run well. I imagine if I try and play something kind of a little bit simpler, like Isaac, visually, then it should run better. Nah, let's find out. Oh my god, look at the size of that screen. It's curling right around. That is awesome. I'm not, I'm, okay, I'm not even gonna lie. That is, okay, this is running really well. There's no latency on this. Like, this is moving perfectly in time with <laughs> my button presses. I do have a mouse cursor on there, though. Okay, yeah, this this is perfect. This is running out exactly the way I would want it to. This screen is huge. This is very cool. Okay, so Alan Wake didn't work. Um, or it worked, it loaded, but it wasn't great. Like, that experience was pretty rough. But something a little bit more simplistic, kind of a bit more pixel art -y, is um, running really well. Luck down, luck up. Amazing. Right, I can't sit here and just start playing Isaac because that's problematic. Yeah, this is all really, really nice. And you don't have to play in the Steam home environment. You can you can switch this off and just play in like a kind of a big black abyss, like a big black room, um, if you would prefer that. I realize now that if you have never seen this game, this is a very strange game uh, for me to pick. You know, I'm killing, you know, big naked babies and I'm flying around as a little demon and there's headless children. Yeah, I, I'm not going to try and explain it right now. I'm probably just going to switch game. Okay, so yeah, that works perfectly well. Okay, I would never recommend you do this with a online-only competitive game because you're not going to be playing as well, I don't think, <laughs> on a big screen and there's kind of latency implications. But this is Hunt Showdown and it it basically has no <laughs> no latency at all. I would also never play this game with a controller. I always play this game with keyboard and mouse, so I'm going to die immediately. This is this is um, really impressive. It's strange that Alan Wake wasn't running or was running really badly, but something like this, which looks incredible, is running fine, like absolutely fine. Oh man, I've never I have never played on control. <laughs> This is horrible. How do I even like... Okay, that's how I hit things with the butt of my gun. It's very, very good. I am noticing a little bit of latency now. A little bit of kind of lag, I guess, as I move around the world. Um, which I, I expected from the off. But it's still playable and it's very impressive. You definitely wouldn't win in any firefights playing like this, though. Is that red because there's someone nearby? I think it is. I think it's red because there's someone nearby. I never play Soul Survivor. I only ever play... Bounty hunt. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take the rip. I wonder if I can hear the person that's nearby. There's someone on those stairs. And I've just realized I don't know what the shoot button is. <laughs> I guess it's hard. Oh no! He had bleeding ammo. I'm doomed. I'm doomed. Oh! I should have got him. I should have got him with that shot. It is crazy to me that I can play this on this big screen wirelessly on the Quest 3 or Quest 2 or Quest Pro with a free application. Wow, that's 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 kind of nuts. This is definitely going to be a mileage may vary situation. It all depends on your kind of home network infrastructure, what kind of setup you've got. But being able to hop in as quickly and seamlessly as this has been. I mean, you saw the connection process. It took no time to get this running. That's that's a big win. This is a great application to the Quest, uh, the Quest library. Um...
And the experience of playing PC VR games, or Steam VR games, I have to say Steam VR because this won't allow you to play your games outside of Steam VR, that experience is very good, or at least it's been very good for me. Now look, as I said at the start, I don't think this is here to replace Virtual Desktop. Virtual Desktop still has a place within the VR medium, for sure it does. It's an incredible application and it does things that Steam Link can't do and potentially won't ever be able to do, like playing games that are outside of your Steam library, things that are on your Oculus library or elsewhere. Oh bugger. No doggy. Run. Oh no, there's bear traps. Bugger, bugger. Bugger, bugger, bugger. Bug off you. That's it. Get out of here. Get out of This is perfect. There is no latency here at all. It's, um, yeah, absolutely spot on. Yeah, this application isn't going to replace Virtual Desktop, in my personal opinion. Virtual Desktop still has a place for the VR community. And, you know, don't forget, it is an application that's been around for years. It's been revised, revised, revised. It is feature packed, feature rich. And it does things that this application doesn't do. So I don't think Steam Link is trying to take the place of something like Virtual Desktop. But I do think there's an argument to say it will take the place of something like Air Link. If you just want to access your Steam library wirelessly on your Quest device and you don't have the money to shell out for Virtual Desktop or, or you just don't want to pay for an app, you want to do it for free, then who was that? Is there someone over here? then this is going to be the vibe. This is going to be the application to try. This is a very impressive day one performance from this brand new piece of software. Um, you can get it from the Quest Store. It's on the official Quest Store. It's just called Steam Link. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you if you want to, want to grab hold of it. And yeah, I would urge you all to... Oh, that nearly got me. I'd urge you all to check it out. Right, I hope you've all enjoyed. I have thoroughly enjoyed checking this out this morning. And now I'm just reminding you all that um, the Light Brigade is one of the very best VR games that has released in 2023. If you haven't played this game, you need to rectify that. Come and check it out. It's amazing. It's available natively on standalone headsets or PC. VR, which is where I'm playing it right now. It is a sublime game. Right, I can't get too into this. I've got work to do. Take care of yourselves, everyone. I really hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please do leave a like, leave a comment, hit subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon for another one. Come and check out Steam Link. This is very, very impressive. Woo, boy. Uh oh. Yeah, stay down, boy. Stay down.